time for another DP Review road trip. This time, we're hitting the back roads of Idaho with photographer Michael Bonacore and Canon's new 6D Mark II. Our destination? Well, we're not sure yet. But along the way, we'll be visiting remote locations to meet up with interesting folks and capture some beautiful fall colors. From the open road to the end of the road, buckle up and join us for Michael Bonacore's Idaho. My name is Michael Bonacore. I am a travel photographer. I also run Resource Travel, which is a website where we aim to tell inspiring travel stories. I'm usually traveling about 200 days a year, but I've chosen to make my home here in Boise, Idaho. It's got incredible access to some of the most beautiful and breathtaking landscapes and outdoors that I've ever seen. The first stop on our trip was just shy of the Heaven's Gate Overlook above the Seven Devils Wilderness area for a few sunset shots. All right, Michael, so the light's closing out behind us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, where we are right now? So right now we're at Hell's Canyon Recreation Area. We are overlooking the Seven Devils Mountain Range. In this case, we have a cool road here, so I really want to get the road incorporated with the shots. I also like to get people in the photograph. So if you were wearing a red jacket, <laughs> I would say to you, Carrie, go stand out there while I get you with this stunning mountain backdrop in the background. As luck would have it, our director happens to be wearing a very red jacket. No way. Yeah. All right, let's try it. All right. Right there is perfect. I mean, this is such a beautiful location. This is really what Idaho is all about. So I like to underexpose a lot of times just because I find that it's easier to pull the shadows out. With some great photos in the bag, we headed down the mountain to set up camp and get some rest. When we got to Riggins, we stayed in a repurposed church camp, which was really cool. It was in the middle of nowhere, right along a creek, beautiful, quiet. You could see a million stars, absolutely incredible. Percolator cop. I could deliver you coffee if you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just coffee to the It's amazing. The 6D Mark II is Canon's 26 megapixel entry level full frame DSLR. It utilizes Canon's excellent dual pixel AF in live view. It also features an articulating screen and can shoot up to 6 FPS in burst mode. All right, now we want them to come over here. Okay. Yeah, good boys. Guess we overstayed our welcome. Once we left Riggins, we continued north where we hit the Whitebird Overlook. One of my favorite locations in all of Idaho to photograph, especially in the winter. It overlooks this entire valley and it seems to go on for miles. So we got Zach up there, our buddy Zach. I really want to get this uh, compressed shot with the 85, you know, make it a little scary. He looks more comfortable standing on that rock than, uh, than I did, I will say. Yeah. Kind of got a little bit of vertigo in us. He's younger, I think. I didn't know what I was missing in life without a touchscreen. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. you just did not look, you didn't look right up there. No. After we left Wiper, we drove along Highway 12, which is some of the most remote section of Idaho I've ever seen. It's like uh, green waders and some really good suspenders. Working our way along the Selway River, we stopped at the Fen Ranger Station in the Nez Perce National Forest, hoping to get some advice on great photo ops nearby. Right here is the edge of the wilderness. I also got some sweet swag. Only you! The rangers pointed us to the Split Creek Trailhead, which featured a footbridge before a hike to a viewpoint. For me, the most fun I have on these road trips is campfires. Drinking a couple good beers, eating some great food, listening to great music, soaking in the stars. That's what road trips are all about. Next morning, we woke up before a sunrise and we were lucky that we did because there was some beautiful fog hanging around the trees up at the top of the hill. Early morning, I love using a tripod. At F4, I'm getting a 1 25th of a second shutter speed. Yes, yeah, so we're going to set up an interval timer here. We are going to try to do our best to have a slow enough shutter speed to kind of blur that motion of the fog, 
blur the water in the foreground just a little bit. And uh, as the light's coming up, it should be a really nice scene. With the sun cresting the horizon and the fog dissipating, we turned our cameras around and shot into the sun for a different look. When you shoot at an aperture like f18, f22, when you're shooting into a light like a sun or a street light, it's going to create that starburst effect. The rangers had told us about a location called Selway Falls. We thought we knew how to get there, and we wound up getting lost. I don't know what this symbol means. I think that's Ranger Station. Well, that's Ranger Station. What's this oh, yeah, yeah. square with a circle in it symbol? Uh, I think that's a uh, center point metering book. When we finally found it, we actually wound up taking some really cool shots. It's a beautiful location. No one else for miles. My preferred shutter speed for when I'm shooting moving water is around eight tenths of a second, maybe a second. It gives me the slow motion effect, but not too slow. After leaving the Nez Perce Forest, we drove north to the town of Fernwood to meet up with Christy Wolf to check out a fire tower she's rehabbing to put on Airbnb. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. It was really cool. Bright red, in the middle of nowhere, among all these giant trees. All the properties are off grid that I do, and partly that's because it's cheap land, but also because they're remote, and I really like that. And I like trying to provide an experience that people are gonna love and kind of not even realize that they're off grid. I think people don't even realize how tired they are until they have a couple days out in nature and then they're like, oh yeah, that's what it's like, you know? I mean, I go to sleep when it gets dark and I wake up when it's light. People don't do that. Christy had a book of all these old radio communications which outlined all the emergency calls they would get. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but it's pretty cool. Passenger having labor pains. And it gets better. Tell the lady that she must calm down and stop if she wants assistance. <laughs> you know, I just want to keep making really interesting places and I'm going to keep doing that as long as people enjoy it and as long as I'm physically able to. It was finally time to say goodbye to Christy and start making our way back south. Outside the town of McCall, we stumbled upon some of the best fall color we'd seen yet. Rich, pleasing colors have long been a strong point on Canon cameras, and the 6D2 is no different. Churning out warm, saturated yellows and reds, it really helped the leaves to pop against the conifers and the sky. So we stayed in McCall, and the next morning we woke up to a lot of fresh snow on the ground. Not that unusual for an autumn in Idaho. So I called my buddy Cody Monroe, who runs CM Backcountry Rentals, and he had some really cool razors that we took out all the way up into the mountains. After four days of shooting primarily static landscapes, I really wanted to have some kind of movement in my photos, some kind of action. Cody was driving fast and crazy. It was a lot of fun and definitely put the camera to good use in those conditions. So Michael, I can see you've got your 6D2 on the hood over there. What are you, uh, what are you doing? So I'm utilizing the touchscreen flipped out and I've got the camera right here on the hood, which when I use the tap to focus and exposure, it's giving me a really cool inside view of Cody. Automatically focuses on his helmet and takes the shot for me. With the snow coming down, we had a chance to put the 6D2's weather sealing to the test. Michael Bonacore doesn't need gloves to shoot in the snow in the mountains of Idaho. I do. I always switch into full manual because the brightness of the snow will fool the camera's meter and it'll often start to turn it all gray and it looks kind of mucky and you have to push the files in post. So I basically get an exposure that I'm happy with and switch into manual. That's how you have fun in Idaho, right? That's right. What I love most about travel and adventure is sharing the experiences with good friends, enjoying life, enjoying each other's company, and this trip had all of that, in a state that I'm proud to call home. Road tripping through Idaho with Michael was an unforgettable experience. From small towns to towering peaks and everything in between, the natural beauty of Idaho shined through in each and every image we captured. Until next time, I'm Carrie with DP Review.